everybody. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be talking to you about all of the books that I hope to read in the month of May. So you guys are probably tired of hearing me mention this, but I am super busy preparing for summer reading still and that takes place next month. So this month is one of the busiest months uh, for me of the year. And so I do not want to set myself an actual TBR, so I'm going to set myself up, which this is kind of what I already do anyways, but kind of like a possibility pile or a um, May hopefuls kind of deal. So I've got a stack of books here that I'm going to go through with you, and some of them I am probably going to read, and then some of them like I want to read, but I may not. We'll just see what I get around to this month. So, first on the list is The Invited by Jennifer McMahon. You may recognize this from last month's TBR, and that is because I have not yet finished it. I did start it, and I'm about halfway through. If you can see where my bookmark is, that's about how far I am in. And I'm enjoying it so far. For me, I don't think it's as good as The Winter People was by Jennifer McMahon, um, but I do still think this will probably be about a four-star read. Um, it is kind of slow, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I'm just not used to reading a lot of slow things. But if you don't remember, this book is about, um, well, let me just read the blurb. Um, this says, A Chilling Ghost Story with a Twist. The New York Times bestselling author of The Winter People returns to the woods of Vermont to tell the story of a husband and wife who don't simply move into a haunted house, they build one. So... I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that. If you wanna know more, you can watch some of my previous videos where I might have described this a little bit more, but essentially, this is a creepy story. It's got um, dual timelines, but it doesn't bounce back and forth as much in this one as it did The Winter People. And so, you've got a witch named Hattie who was um, accused of being a witch. She was hung. These people are building, well, I'm basically describing it now, but these people are building their house from the tree, um, the wood from the tree that she was hung from. And so, building a haunted house. This is super creepy. Jennifer McMahon writes some pretty creepy stuff, but it's like historical mystery, and I really enjoy that. So I'm going to continue reading that, and I am buddy reading this with Liv from Liv's Library, so I'm really excited to talk to her about this one when I finish up. Along the same lines, I have another Jennifer McMahon book, and this is The Drowning Con, which just came out last month, and I'm really excited to read this one. I'm going to go ahead and read the inside cover because I don't really remember what this one's about. It's been so long since I looked at the synopsis. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read that as well. Um, a chilling new novel about a woman who returns to the old family home after her sister mysteriously drowns in its swimming pool, but she's not the pool's only victim. Be careful what you wish for. When social worker Jax receives nine missed calls from her older sister, Lexi, she assumes it's just another one of her sister's episodes. Manic and increasingly out of touch with reality, Lexi has pushed Jax away for over a year. But the next day, Lexi is dead, drowned in the pool at their grandmother's estate. When Jax arrives at the house to go through her sister's things, she learns that Lexi was researching the history of their family and the property. She dives deeper into the research herself and discovers that the land holds a far darker past than she could have ever imagined. In 1929, 37-year-old newlywed Ethel Monroe hopes desperately for a baby in an effort to distract her. And in an effort to distract her, Ethel's husband whisks her away on a trip to Vermont where a natural spring is showcased by the newest and most modern hotel in the Northeast. Once there, Ethel learns that the water is rumored to grant wishes, never suspecting that the spring takes in equal measure to what it gives. A haunting, twisty, and compulsively readable thrill ride. So, it says it's a modern day ghost story that illuminates how the past, though sometimes forgotten, is never really far behind us. So, that sounds so good. Two of my coworkers have read this and they said it was Jennifer McMahon's best book yet. And we have all three read, um, well, I'm still reading The Invited, but we've all three read The Invited. We've all three read The Winter People and The Winter People was all of our favorites up until this point, which now theirs is this. So I'm feeling like I will probably be the same way. So I'm really excited to pick this one up this month. Next up, I'm going to be reading The Bicycle Spy by Yana Zeldis McDonough. This is the Page Turner's Middle Grade Book Club book of the month for May. That is the book club that I host at my library. And this is the book that was chosen. I gave them a lot of historical fiction and more cultural options. And so this is the one that they chose. And um, this is about a boy named Marcel. And Marce Mar Marcel lives in France. 
and he is um, fascinated with the Tour de France, the greatest bicycle race in the world, and he hopes to one day be able to go again and to ride in the race, but now it's 1942, and ever since 1940, um, France has been occupied by the Germans, and so the race has been canceled. There are soldiers everywhere, and Marcel starts making these trips back and forth between his parents' house and his, um, I think it's his aunt and uncle, um, and he finds out some secrets, and he ends up being the bicycle spy. So, this is the book that we are reading again for book club this month. I've already started it just because the past few months, I have waited until the last minute to read these before book club, and so I'm already starting this one. And it's good so far. I think what it'll probably be is probably like a three star just because I feel like it's going to be, from what I can tell so far, I feel like it's probably just going to be an average read. But I do think it's going to be really interesting to discuss the war and different stuff like that, especially in France um, and not in the U.S., like what they're used to hearing. And then talk about the Tour de France. There's like a brief history of World War II in the back of this. Um, some information um, on the Tour de France and different stuff like that. So I'm really excited to discuss this with my book club kiddos. I'm also hoping to be able to read Clara and the Sun, which I'm gonna butcher, butcher this name. I think it's Kazuo Ishiguro or something to that effect. I apologize for not knowing the correct pronunciation, but that is the book for the Homebody Book Club, which is hosted by Liv from Liv's Library, Zoe from Zoe Delaney, and Kaylin from Kaylin Abridged. And I love their book club. If you have not checked it out already, I highly recommend. They have a YouTube channel and an Instagram. And it's just my favorite thing ever. Like, I didn't even read the book for this past month just because I was really busy and it wasn't like at the top of my list. So I just passed it up. But I ended up going back and watching the live show for it just because I just enjoy hanging out with those girls so much. So definitely check that out. But this month, they're going to be reading Clara and the Sun. And this is essentially what I think it's about is an AI who is in the store um, waiting for somebody to come in and select them and they get to watch and observe humans and their behavior and kind of make different inferences based off of that. So it sounds like an intriguing concept. I've never read anything by this author before, but I have heard great things. So I'm hoping to maybe be able to listen to the audiobook for this one. Next up, I'm going to be reading Alone by Megan E. Freeman. This is a story about a girl named Maddie and one day Maddie wakes up to find that her town has been abandoned. She's the only person left in town. Um, everybody has left their pets behind and um, things are kind of still like out of place. Like it's not like anybody was planning to leave. Things are still scattered, nothing's put together. And so she ends up having to learn how to survive. I originally picked this one up because it reminded me of The Hatchet, even though Hatchet by Gary Paulson is um, set in the wild because he is in a plane crash and he has to learn to survive in the wild. And Maddie is surviving in a town. So she does have resources readily available for her, but if nobody's around, the electricity's gonna go out, you're gonna run out of water, you're gonna run out of daylight. Um, the heat and air is not gonna work for forever, so you're gonna have to deal with the elements still a little bit there. She ends up pairing up with her neighbor's Rottweiler named George, and they have this really sweet companionship and friendship there, and so, yeah. I'm really excited to read this one and see how Maddie survives this and where everybody went and what is going on. This is a novel written in verse. It's about 400 pages, but I think that I should be able to get through it pretty quick. Um, I don't read a lot of novels in verse, but I'm really excited to read this one. Next, I plan to read After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I actually caught this on sale on Amazon for like two bucks and I knew I had to grab it because I had been wanting to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid's work. So this story, I'm actually gonna read again from the back just so I make sure that I cover everything because I'm not sure that I remember like all that it's about. I just know the general concept. But this is a breathtaking novel about modern marriage, the depth of family ties and the year that one remarkable heroine spends exploring both. When Lauren and Ryan's marriage reaches the breaking point, they come up with an unconventional plan. They decide to take a year off in the hope of finding a way to fall in love again. One year apart and only one rule. They cannot contact each other. Aside from that, anything goes. Lauren embarks on a journey of self-discovery, quickly finding that her friends and family have their own ideas about the meaning of marriage. These influences, as well as her own healing process and the challenges of living apart from Ryan, begin to change Lauren's ideas about monogamy and marriage. She starts to question when, when, you, can have, when you can have romance without fidelity and commitment without marriage, when love and lust are no longer tied together, what do you value? What are you willing to fight for? This is a love story about what happens when the love fades. 
It's about staying in love, seizing love, forsaking love, and committing to love with everything you've got. And above all, After I Do is the story of a couple caught up in an old game and searching for a new road to happily ever after. So that sounds really intriguing to me, like the concept of a marriage kind of like, you know, we talk about you have to choose to love somebody and you wake up every day and you choose to love them every day. It's not always the mushy gushy feelings. Um, even though those, they, they kind of like come and go. You just have to learn when you live with somebody, you learn to love them every day and you choose them every day of your life when you get married, or at least that's what I believe about it. And so knowing that this is a story about kind of a love that has kind of dampened a little bit, or maybe they just got used to going through the motions and then finding out like they're going to spend a year apart and what is going to happen with that? What are they going to do? It kind of makes me nervous, but it also intrigues me. And Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing is really good. I read um, Evidence of the Affair by her, which was a novella. And then I also read the seven, the, I keep wanting to say seven and a half. There's the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which is not by Taylor Jenkins Reid. But then there's the seven deaths of, or not the seven deaths. Oh my goodness. The seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Hugo. They all sound the same. <laughs> Anyways, that one was really good. And so I'm really excited to pick this one up and see what I think. Next up, I plan to read Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. This is a book about a man named Malcolm Kershaw, and he is a bookshop owner. And one day he made a blog post that included Eight Perfect Murders chosen from among the best of the best. Um, so these books include The Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne, which by the way, I had no idea that the author of Winnie the Pooh wrote anything else besides Winnie the Pooh, but that just goes to show I don't know everything. Um, Malice Afro... Uh, oh my goodness, Malice Aperthought, Aperthought, that is a hard word, <laughs> um, by Anthony Berkeley Cox, The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie, Double Indemnity by James M. Cain, Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith, The Drowner by John D. McDonald, Death Trap by Ira, Ira Levin, and The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And now, somebody, he ends up having this FBI agent come to his door, her name, um, let's see, I wrote her name down somewhere. I'm listening to this on audiobook already, so I've already started this. Her name is Agent Gwen Mulvey, and she comes to his door and says, hey, I think somebody is using this list to try to frame you. Either Well, first she thinks he did it, um, then she thinks maybe somebody's trying to frame him by using this list, because um, they're going down through the list and committing murders in real life, just like these eight perfect murders in these books. So that concept was really intriguing to me, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This is an advanced reader copy that I won from Goodreads last year, and I never got around to reading it, and I feel super guilty because I don't get ARCs very often, so when I get them, I try to prioritize them, and I don't know what happened, but I just forgot about this one. But the reason that I decided to pick it up now is because last month I got to meet author R.J. Jacobs, and he said that if he aspired to be like any writer, it would probably be to be like Peter Swanson, and I was just really inspired by RJ in general. And we got to talk a little bit about writing and like he kind of encouraged me to pick up the pen again and try to write because I have written previously in the past, not any books or anything, but I used to do blog posts. And in middle school, I wrote a lot of poetry and short stories and I just never thought I was good enough, but he kind of inspired me. And so um, I wanted to pick up someone who inspired him, which was Peter Swanson. And so I thought, I have a book by him. I'm going to go ahead and read it. So that's why I picked this one up. I'm listening to it on audio and I will let you guys know what I think. The next book that I want to read is The Last Bookshop in London by Madeline Martin. Um, this is a historical fiction inspired by the true World War II history of the few bookshops to survive the Blitz. So this takes, takes place in London and it follows our main character, Grace Bennett. And Grace has always wanted to move to London, move to the city, but she never expected it to be all of this, all of the war stuff going on. She never expected to work in a bookshop, which she is. Um, but essentially, this is a story about the power of how story, the power of storytelling to unite a community. And so, when I read that line in the synopsis that it was the power of storytelling to unite a community, it really reminded me of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Pill Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. Um, that is one of my favorite historical fiction novels, if you don't already know that. It's written in letters, which is phenomenal. And it was about this book club that formed um, kind of out of nowhere. It was, it was as a, a way to get out of being out past curfew. They formed this book club and then they ended up actually doing the book club and it kind of helped them 
I don't want to say like ignore the war, but amidst all that chaos, it gave them some peace and friendship and community. And so this really reminded me of that, even though I know it's not the same thing. It just, it takes place in a bookshop and it's about um, books bringing people together in a hard time. And I think that's what books are for a lot of the time too. And so I'm really excited to try this one out. I'm going to have to get it from my library and I'm not sure if it's checked in or not. So I may not get to it this month, but it is one that I want to get to really, really soon. Next up, I am super stoked because I have in my hands The OK Witch and The Hungry Shadow by Emma Steinkellner, and this is an advanced reader copy. Um, I am a children's librarian, and at the library, every now and then, School Library Journal will send us a box of ARCs to review, and it kind of helps us decide what we're going to put in our collection. And this book doesn't come out until July, which is, like, not that far from now, but I don't want to wait on this because I love The OK Witch. And if you guys have not read The OK Witch, which is this book, you should. This is my favorite graphic novel of all time right now. And I know some people just think it's okay. And some people think it's good. Some people read it four stars. But this is five stars. This is my kind of graphic novel. And I absolutely love it. Um, it's about this 13-year-old girl named Moth. And she loves all things witchy. But she gets made fun of a lot. And then one day she finds out that she is actually part of a lineage of witches. And there's just things in here that remind me of like Halloween Town or that remind me of the Salem Witch Trials. And I love that. So I'm so excited to pick up The OK Witch and The Hungry Shadow. And this is not all done. So like you got the parts that are in color, but most of this is in black and white, which is a bummer. But I understand why they do that for ARCs because they're trying to save color ink. Totally understandable. So I'm going to buy it when it comes out anyways. So I'm going to read the ARC now and then I'll buy it in color when it comes out. But I'm so stoked. Like I said, if you have not picked up The OK Witch, I highly recommend if you're looking for a good middle grade graphic novel. I've got a couple more graphic novels here that I'm hoping to get to this month, but this one is actually a manga, and that is A Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama. So I've got volumes three and four that I hope to get to this month. I have the first five volumes. Yeah. And so I've read the first two, and I need to continue on before I forget what's going on. This is a series that I love so much. Liv from Liv's Library really got me into this and really got me into manga because I wasn't quite sure about it. I like graphic novels, but I just wasn't sure if manga was my cup of tea. But these are so, so good. So I would highly recommend if you're thinking about trying out manga, start with Witch Hat Adelier. You can't go wrong. Um, so I really want to read volume three and four, and then I'll have volume five left. And after I read that, I'll have to buy more books in the series. I'm not sure how many are out right now. So I guess I'll buy whatever's out. But I do want to get through a couple more of these so I don't forget all of the story because I am really enjoying it. And lastly, I have Displacement by Kiku Hughes, which has dog hair all over it because I have a dog. Um, so this book is historical fiction, and I don't remember exactly what it's about. I think it's about this girl who, like, goes back in time. She time travels to when her grandmother, I believe, was in a Jap Japanese internment camp. Um, and it's something to that effect. Let's see. Um, suddenly Kiku is torn out of her own time. Though she was on vacation in present day San Francisco just moments before, Kiku now finds herself displaced to the 1940s Japanese American internment camp where her late grandmother, Ernestina, was forcibly relocated during World War II. Kiku is stuck with no choice but to live alongside Ernestina and other Japanese American citizens in the internment camp. During her time with them, she witnesses the lives of people who were denied civil liberties by their own government, but still managed to create a community and commit acts of resistance in order to survive. Kiku Hughes weaves a riveting, bittersweet tale that highlights the intergenerational impact of trauma and the redemptive power of memory. Wow. Okay, so I guess this is like a memoir of her, like probably telling her grandmother's story, I would assume, since the main character is the same name as the author. Which I didn't think, I don't think I knew that beforehand. Yeah, so look, that's her and her grandmother. Okay, this is going to be really cool. So hopefully I will get to that one this month as well. But I think that is all the books that I'm going to try to read this month. And it's pretty funny because I said I was really busy. And then I sit here and I make a stack of books this large. But this is just kind of like what's on my radar, what I want to read. And that doesn't mean I'll get to all of them this month. Probably won't. I mean, it would be great if I could. But we're just going to see. Um, also, I just want to let you guys know that I have not really been in a great mood to film and it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I'm exhausted because I'm quite literally running myself into the ground with all that I have to do and I'm not quite sure how to balance it all. So if you don't see very many videos from me or if they're kind of sporadic, I apologize. Please give me some grace because I'm trying to figure out 
how to function being this busy because I don't think I've ever been this busy before in my life. So all that being said, thank you so, so much for clicking on this video, for coming to my channel and for tuning in. If you have read any of these books and enjoyed them or didn't enjoy them, let me know what you thought in the comments and let me know if any of these are on your TBR. Also tell me what one book you are most excited to read this month. And before you leave, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button down at the bottom and the bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.